Hi everyone and welcome to the fourth, the fourth episode of the From Cards Bridget. Universe and Everything Cast. I'm Joe and I'm joined today by Emma. Hello. And today we're going to be diving into the collection in queue, which I think me and Emma are a bit daunted by. Oh yeah, I'm terrified. Yeah, it's, this is like, it feels like the dread of you've not done your homework and you don't know anything about the subject because yep. we're diving into Futurology. Futurology is home to some quite strong cards in queue. So we've got Laser Sword, Super Soldier. A lot of big, yeah, big cards in this collection. And I'm going to kick us off with a fact around cloning. Did you know that in 1952, an unnamed tadpole made history by being the first successful clone ever? Which is that's crazy. That's absolutely wild. 1952. I know, that's madness, isn't also it? Also a tadpole. Yeah, I was a bit like, oh, there could have been something more impressive. Like someone sitting in the lab being like, what can yeah. we make two of? Or like, what can we grow? <laughs> and then like, yeah. And it's so sad that it was unnamed. I can't believe it. I, I, feel like, I feel like most of the famous animals, whether they've gone into space, you've got, you've got yep. Dolly the sheep that got cloned. But tadpole gets no love. I, I don't think know we should name about. it. Tina. Tina. <laughs> <laughs> I just threw out a T well, name yeah. like a lot of Tina's good. Tina the tap <laughs> Somebody yeah. else should name it for us. <laughs> if anyone's got any better names than Tina, just leave it in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> As always with these episodes, we go into sneak peeks of new cards, five minute deck building challenge, and we also talk about our favourite cards within the collections. I think we'll start off with our... Two new cards. Two new cards. New if you want to start off with bit... yours, yeah. Yeah, this is the bit everyone wants to hear. Mine's going to be short, Joe. Lovely. Uh, my card is Omnicide. And that's when ah. everybody dies. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Which it will be after Omnicide occurs. Yes, definitely. Is it really just like that's 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 yeah, it? Yeah, that, it's that something that, that just wipes. Yeah, it's something that just wipes everybody out. Whether that's nuclear war or uh -huh. like you know a volcanic event, a yeah. volcanic event. What horrible it goes way, so like kind of yeah. Pompeii esque yeah. thing on a global scale. That being one of the the cards that's coming out soon. We've also yep. got. I'm keeping up with the tempo here with, I think it's Grey Goo. When we think about the end of the world, we think about zombie apocalypse, we think about volcanoes. But American engineer Eric Drexler came up with a different hypothesis about how the end of the world might occur. And it's basically about these like little nanobots that they basically self-replicate. Oh my God. I think the, the fuel that got put out there was carbon or something, but they basically, they just devour matter and will just keep oh. multiplying and multiplying until there's no matter left and everything is gone. I guess that's the whole theory in a nutshell. As you probably I tell, we're not very well read it. on these subjects <laughs> yet. Yeah, this is not within no, our not, comfort not zone at all. <laughs> um, along with these kind of things with futurology as well, I think the main fear factor is exponential growth in terms of like, no. once there's one, there's two, then there's two, then there's four. And there's some crazy numbers that I'm going to maybe throw out a bit later on in terms of how quickly they would... Uh, duplicate and also consume everything so it's <laughs> i dislike everything about that the funny thing is like this stuff freaks me out something awful whereas when we were on black parade week and i was like getting buried alive and yeah, stuff yeah. Like that. i don't know why this stuff horrifies yeah. me so much so on futurology will we crack on with our two favorite cards yes uh, i'll start with my two favorite cards i've gone with super soldier with super soldiers you sort of think of like when they have those ecoskeletons exoskeletons. exoskeletons yeah they have those exoskeletons that kind of make you superhuman strength and all that um but there's actually been some kind of research and some funding going into what a super soldier might be and i know one of the things from the pentagon they were thinking about putting uh is that like synthetic blood where they basically put trillions of like tiny little uh oh. air tanks in your blood and that would oh, kind no. of have the effect of allowing you to breathe underwater for long periods of time, which is just mental. To um, and then there were other ones. I think it's an MIT. They're trying to strengthen or augment the human ankle so that you can run all day on it, um, which just sounds... Uh, no. I, I don't really know how that would work. Just... I, for me, when I'm running, it's more my lungs that give way before my ankles oh, do. Oh, absolutely, so it's like, yes. My yeah. chest has shut down before my ankles do. <laughs> yeah, my ankles are fine. I don't need that bit. Um, <laughs> the second one I chose is cloaking device. Um, nice. Did successfully manage to render an object invisible. And it was something to do with changing the energy in certain colours to match other colours on the spectrum, something like that. I'm going to sound like I kind of know what I'm talking about, but I, I don't. There was a little bit in my head that was like, maybe it's about reflecting light, and yeah, then you started yeah, yeah. on another stuff, and I was like, I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. I already uh, don't understand. 
this episode is just us just kind of starting in the nice bit that we understand and just slowly <laughs> we <know> drifting. <laughs> yeah, we're just losing brain cells as this goes on but they managed to do it and yeah they rendered an object invisible so that kind of thing is coming a little bit we're going to have the invisibility cloaks from harry potter and they're just solid like Invisibility cloak and super soldier. You kind of, you know, cool. that's a good. They're both very cool as well. Like, cool. They're literally yes. like awesome. Yes. You know what yes. I mean? Like they're the kind of thing that you would pick first, and if yeah. you could, you know, Typical. in a game, you'd be like, I want a super soldier <laughs> yeah. who can go invisible, please. Yeah, um, that'd be great. I've not gone down that road. <laughs> that's um, good. My two, first of all, I've gone for the robot companion, just because nice. it's cute. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I yeah. like. I like the I like the idea of a robo pet because you never really have to deal with the sadness of them getting sick and dying yeah, and stuff. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's understandable. But at the same time, there's something nice about like like a furry pet. I don't know. I think I'd like. Yeah, I wouldn't say they'd be super and cuddly a, and. Yeah, you know. I both do and don't want a robot pet. Basically, that's that's the only reason I picked this because it would be cool to have a robot pet, but I don't know if I would actually get one. Um, and my other one is cryogenic freezing, ah, because. Cool. I don't think I would want to be Fry from Futurama. I think that would be awful. <laughs> like, I think it would be the absolute worst. Um, but I still think quite like it as a concept. Yeah. Um, plus, I love the ability for this one. It's got this like wake up thing where it locks and it's losing power every turn until oh, okay. it eventually unlocks and then you can play it. So it looks That's cool. super powerful. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is great, but it has to like thaw out. Ah, you know, nice. Like it has yeah. to unlock. So I really like that. Whenever I make a deck for a league, I always like to have one card that kind of has the potential just to sit and power, like Dragon King or Heart, or I think Robot Companion does that as well, doesn't it? Like on, on the start of the turn, it gives energy. It might not. It's a it, yeah, it's a random science card, so it's one of these ones uh, okay. that's worth hanging yeah, on yeah. to. Yeah, just 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 pumping power into your deck. Yeah. yeah. No, I like those ones because they sort of they. The, the support class of Q, yes. almost, which is, yes. which is always cool. But that's my two. Something yeah. keeps up the stupid. <laughs> yeah, no, I should have gone with that. I think I think what I did, I just went for the ones that I understood the name of a little bit. And I was like, yeah, Fair. let's do that Fair. one. <laughs> um, well, we have a look at our decks, which we haven't actually yeah. seen of each other's yet. So, so with these five-minute deck building challenges, I do quite like to try and go into albums and collections that I don't normally go into. Now, the one that I kind of started on was Super Soldier. Um, needs brilliant bodies to give you a nice boost for your science cards, I believe. Um, so I went into Go Skeleton, Brain, and Blood, Sweat, and Tears, which is also a really nice combo that just, you know, yeah. if, if, you're, if you're new to Q and you want to go get something that just bolts your deck quite well, then Blood, Sweat, and Tears is a really one to go for. They're basic cards, quite easy to get through training posts. Get, yeah. yeah, yeah, which is yeah. nice. And I've always seen Atombrosaurus. I know it's quite a... Strong card. I've always popular, wanted. Popular, yeah. Yeah, popular. I've seen it everywhere. But yeah, I really just wanted to give it a go with paleontology. Um, and I think there was a little catch in the skeleton that it has to be six or more. So I tried to stick to mm -hmm. six paleontology cards, not to make it super paleontology heavy. Um, so I've gone with Big Al because I love that name. Whenever I see that card, it just makes me smile. <laughs> um, and then I've gone with some other carnivores. I thought I'd, I was going through the subcategories and I was like, oh, carnivores would be cool. But yeah, that's, that's that's the deck. No, that's um, really cool. I like that you've gone basically like as far forward in time as you can and as far back in time yes, as you yeah. can with both futurology <laughs> and paleo. <laughs> yes, it's really it's cool. Completely. I think paleo and science are a good, a good pairing though. Yeah, it's a weird one to kind of, like. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't strike you as one that would link at all, would it? But it's nice to have those yeah. kind of jumps and those transitions between those two. So I don't normally touch science decks, like, yeah. <laughs> as we Ever. discussed last time. Um, so this was actually a really fun challenge for mm -hmm. me because this was so outside of my comfort zone. It was unbelievable. Um, but I think what I ended up doing is I think I ended up doing similar to what you've done in a couple of decks, Joe. Uh -huh. um, where what I did was I found a card and went, "Oh, I should follow that one." And then yeah. it went, no, go that way. And I was like, oh, I should go that way. But yeah. I managed, yeah, I managed to kind of contain myself. So I've done um, a bit of a 6-6-6 six, six, six split. So I've nice. got six cards from Futurology, nice. six cards from Brilliant Human Body, and six mm -hmm. cards from Ingenious Inventions. So uh, this nice. was surprisingly yeah. well controlled for me. Yeah, so yeah, I think that's clearly good. trying science made me do new things. Yeah, yeah. Um, so my Futurology cards, cloning for all the reasons we've already talked about and same way... Um, cloaking device as well uh, i did super soldier for exactly the same reasons you did so that's what sent me down the brilliant hum human body route robot companions in there and because i'd already gone oh i'm going to do brilliant human body i put retinal projection in there 
because if you've played any brilliant human body cards your ingenious inventions gain 16 power oh, so that's nice. what made me go yeah. oh ingenious inventions yeah so yeah. basically it's it's kind of retinal projections fault but super soldier got me there sure. too nice yeah i've also put in the doomsday clock in there as well because I quite like a Hail Mary card yeah. so it's this idea if you're losing on turn 3 you gain 85 power this turn Nice. Um, yeah. and I've been trying some rainbow decks in my off time just now ah, cool, and I've been yeah. popping in a couple of cards that are like you're probably failing by now and you're going to yeah, use this yeah, yeah, yeah. because I usually later. am it was I've a frantic 5 to... minutes <laughs> <laughs> it was mental. I've never been able to kind of like go down the link and then come back to a good good spot. It was pure luck. In five <laughs> pure luck. And nice. safety coffins, because it felt really like the least Emma deck in the world. So I just had to put <laughs> had something to throw... in <laughs> So that's so good. I don't I even love... think it would help me, but it's in there. I love that you found that in the science album. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I think it would be cool if like, because we're saying, talking about uh, Blood, Sweat and Tears is quite an easy one to get. It'd be kind of cool to like, Maybe next episode we could do a deck where you're not allowed limited or you're only allowed commons or something like that, which would be kind of a cool one. Let's see what we can do with that. I think that would be really cool because there are the occasional cards that are like, this one gives all your rares a boost and things like that. If anyone's interested, just let us know whether you'd like to see, should we say, a non-limited deck or a... Maybe a common deck or a rare or or something like that. Yeah, something like that. We'll stick to to a rarity suit or a type of card and we'll see what we can do. Because it might be nice just to kind of have a look at yeah, some fusion almost like ingredient a, meta deck. That'd be cool. Yeah, <laughs> almost like a beginner's deck because, like, we were saying that were like cards that you can get hold of easily. Yeah, it'd be really nice. Yeah, because that'd I think be sometimes we all kind of latch on to limited legendaries. I think there's definitely a temptation yeah. to be like, I've got this one cool card. Yeah, and I've been I, using it all I, time. I think I literally said that for Super Soldier. I was like, I picked it because it was legendary and limited. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it would be nice so, to choose some other yeah, ones. Yeah, so I guess it would mean that like you're forced to like look at the cards you don't normally touch. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. So let us know which one you'd like to see. Um, and we'll make sure we do the five minute challenge for that for next time. Yep. Um, we've also got a challenge for everyone watching and listening as well. What we'd love for you guys to do is to tell us what's a piece of like future technology you would love to see and um, send us in a tweet, drop us a message on Discord, Facebook, whatever, yeah. and we might have some goodies. Yeah, we'll, we'll, pop, we'll pop everything in the description below so you can get hold of us. I'm just going to circle back to Grey Goo because I did mention that there were some crazy sort of calculations in terms of how long it would take for those nanobots to kind of consume everything to do with our planet and there was actually one person robert freitas freitas i'm sorry if i'm saying that wrong but he calculated along with all the sort of geographical uh oh conditions uh, with the amount of these are carbon consuming nanobots mind you you know not any other kind of rip-off brand nanobot um, <laughs> we don't want any carbon... your hydrogen <laughs> no no these are them. carbon proper carbon ones um <laughs> And he calculated that if you had, if you released one self-replicating nanobot into our atmosphere, it would take 30 days <gasps> to consume our whole planet. Oh my God, that's faster than I was thinking. I was like, it's going to take like three so months. 30 days. Oh there was some other, and that that's with, you know, thinking about traveling across oceans, blowing through the air, you know, how, where does it get its first bit of? fuel from to like oh my god this is like itself. hardcore maths i know i it's, it's one of those rabbit hole youtube videos you know late night you kind of like <laughs> next yep yeah no yep. it's 2 a.m work at nine no next one um <laughs> it's but, not just video uh, about nanobot replication uh, yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is interesting <laughs> but this um, is the joy of working on q right that there's days where your this google is, search history is... just looks like an yeah. absolute car crash this is cards universe and everything in a nutshell um (laughs) (laughs) but like my week last week was between like googling really intense philosophy i did not understand and tropical fish lovely (laughs) yeah just like nothing (laughs) is coming yeah because people when i when i go to like these pub quizzes and stuff and they're like oh you must know this you do like general knowledge stuff you know about you know you play with cards with you play a game that has cards about everything i'm like uh not really unless you're talking about crustaceans or some kind <laughs> of uh, niche uh black rain frog that kind of doesn't have a tadpole form or something like Chalky that frog. <laughs> yeah you know the black rain frog turned up in my tiktok feed last week and i was the happiest yes. person on the planet i was like look yes. at him go <laughs> <laughs> we were there before he was big <laughs> <laughs> take that tiktok <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> cool. Oh dear. Well, yeah. This has been fun. It's been a good episode. Yeah. I'm so, slightly horrified. Yeah, horrified. We, I think we've done <laughs> a good job of keeping it light, considering what's in yes. there. Yes. What's in future? We did talk about everyone dying twice. Yeah, that was, oh, was a very family. bleak start. Yeah, very bleak start. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's been Futurology. Leave all our socials down below if you want to get in contact with us for, what was it, the, the name of the tadpole, what deck you would like, and anything that would help and, you in the future. Yeah, what what would you want? What would yeah. be your Futurology technology? Plenty to get involved with. Um, so yeah, it's been awesome. But um, yeah, I've been Joe, and this has been Emma. Bye. And as always, keep it cute.